Hi, welcome back to this channel, where we cover various physics topics in this series. Today, we will be covering on how to read the Vernier caliper. Here's a brief overview of how the Vernier caliper works. Take note of the moving parts of this Vernier caliper, namely the Vernier scale. And also take note which scales you take reading from. Let's go over the parts and functions of the Vernier caliper. The most important parts are the main scale and the Vernier scale. The main scale is just like a normal ruler, with a precision of 0.1 cm. The smaller scale is the Vernier scale, and this scale measures values to a higher precision of 0.01 cm. It is very important for you to remember the precision of these two scales. Just remember that the main scale is just like a normal ruler, and the Vernier scale just has a precision one decimal place more than this main scale. Next are the parts that measure the dimensions of objects. There are two jaws. The jaw at the bottom measures the outer dimensions of objects, while the jaw at the top measures the inner dimensions. The stem at the right end measures depth. The last part is the screw clamp, that is used to fix the position of the jaws in place once the object is positioned properly so that readings can be taken. Now let's learn how to read the measurement. The two parts involved are the main scale and the vernier scale. Remember that you should record the reading on the main scale to 0.1 cm and the vernier scale to 0.01 cm. The first reading to take will be that of the main scale. We read the reading on the main scale above the zero marking of the vernier scale, which gives us 1.4 cm. Next, we read the vernier scale by looking for the division which forms a straight line with the main scale, which happens to be the eighth division making the second reading 0.08 cm. We add these two readings to give us the actual measurement of 1.48 cm. Now, let's try some examples. Feel free to take a moment to pause this video to try reading yourself. First, it is important to remind ourselves of the precisions of both scales, which determines the decimal place we record to for each scale. First step, we read the main scale above the zero marking of the vernier scale which gives us 0.5 cm. Next, we read the vernier scale, finding the division that forms a straight line with the main scale, in this case the sixth division, giving us 0.06 cm. Adding these two numbers gives us 0.56 cm. Let's try another example. First step, we read the main scale above the zero marking of the vernier scale, which gives us 1.0 cm. Next, we read the blue vernier scale, finding the division that forms a straight line with the main scale, in this case the 10th division, giving us 0.00 cm. Take note that this is a special case. We take the 10th division on the Vernier scale to be 0.00 cm and not 0.10 cm. Adding these two readings gives us 1.00 cm. Next, we come to the concept of zero error, which refers to how far the Vernier caliper reading deviates from zero when its jaws are closed. That is, we check if the zero mark on the main scale coincides with the zero marking of the sliding vernier scale when the jaws are closed. For a reading to be accurate, we must take into account the zero error and correct the reading. First step to reading the zero error is to identify whether the zero error is positive or negative. In this case, the zero marking of the vernier scale is in front of the zero marking of the main scale. Hence, the zero error is positive. Next, reading the zero error is somewhat similar to taking a normal reading. We read the main scale above the zero marking of the vernier scale, which gives us 0.0 cm. Next, we read the vernier scale, finding the division that forms a straight line with the main scale, in this case the sixth division, giving us 0.06 cm. Adding these two numbers gives us 0.06 cm. The zero error is therefore positive 0.06 cm. Always remember that the zero error has to be accompanied by a sign positive or negative. Let's try another example. First, identify whether the zero error is positive or negative. Since the zero marking of the vernier scale is behind that of the main scale, zero error here is negative. Second, we read the main scale, giving us 0.0 cm. Third, we read the vernier scale. Take note that this step is slightly different for negative zero error. For negative zero errors, we read the vernier scale backwards, counting the number of divisions from the tenth marking giving us the third division which forms a straight line with the main scale, hence 0.03 cm. Adding the two numbers give us 0.03 cm. Remember that the zero error is negative, hence the zero error in this case is negative 0.03 cm. Let's try another example. 
We realize here that the zero marking for both scales are aligned. Reading the main scale gives us 0.0 cm. Reading the Vernier scale, we realize that the tenth division forms a straight line with the main scale, giving us 0.00 cm. Adding both numbers gives us a zero error of 0.00 cm. Basically, there is no zero error in this case. And so long the zero markings for both scales are aligned, and the tenth division of the Vernier scale aligns with the main scale, it is safe to say that there is no zero error. Here in this scenario, we have an observed reading of the Vernier caliper and its zero error. So let's try to find its true reading. Let's take the reading and the zero error separately. First, for the observed reading, the main scale gives us 3.3 cm and the Vernier scale gives us 0.04 cm. Adding both numbers together gives us an observed reading of 3.34 cm. However, that's not all. We have to take into account the zero error to get an accurate measurement. So next, let's take the zero error reading. Since the zero marking of the Vernier scale is behind that of the mean scale, the zero error is negative. Next, let's read the mean scale, giving us 0.0 cm. Then the Vernier scale, and since the zero error is negative, we read the Vernier scale backwards, and the fourth division aligns with the mean scale, giving us 0.04 cm. Adding both numbers gives us 0.04 cm, and the zero error is negative 0.04 cm. To calculate the true reading, or the corrected reading, we subtract the zero error from the measured reading, taking 3.34 cm minus negative 0.04 cm, giving us a corrected reading of 3.38 cm. We have come to the end of this video on reading the Vernet caliper. In the next lesson, I will be touching on how to read the micrometer screw gauge. So if you like this video and found it helpful, do remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you soon!